Megan caught in big lie for Spotify fact checker. Anyone involved prosecuted without exception. Meghan Markle has hired a fact checker for a much anticipated Spotify podcast series, Archetypes. When, ladies and gentlemen, will our Miss Meghan be nominated for actual sainthood? It certainly puts the legendary phrase, recollections may vary, on a whole new level. That's a shame. A fact checker could cut through the confusion which has occasionally and unfortunately followed some of Meghan's statements. Fact checker being paid by the checkee. Will Meghan's new fact checker now go over all Meghan's former statements and point out to the narcissistic actress how many porkies she's told over her many years? Her poise and passion in front of a camera or microphone are surely unequaled in royal history, but these gifts haven't blinded the Duchess of Sussex to the fact that she, like the rest of mankind, is fallible. Richard Eden can reveal that Meghan has been employing a fact checker for archetypes, which resumes today having been suspended immediately after the Queen's death. Meghan hasn't chosen a run-of-the-mill recruit, but a young and highly talented American writer, Nicole Pasulka, whose interests closely mirror her own. I write about criminal justice, activism, race, music, business, queer culture, and gender. Pasulka alerts visitors to her website, which mentions that she's currently writing a book, lest the uninitiated leap to the conclusion that it's a fictionalised account of an attractive, mixed-race American actress, being catapulted to international attention by marrying the youngest son of a king, they should think again. It is instead a deep dive into New York City's underground drag scene and has been praised as an engaging book that will appeal to scholars of gender as well as anyone with an interest in queer culture. There is currently no suggestion that Pasulka's role will extend beyond the podcast. Meghan Markle has been likened to a minefield that keeps going off, a royal commentator has said. The Duchess of Sussex remained in the UK with her husband Prince Harry following the death of the Queen. The pair had coincidentally arrived in the country for charity engagements as the late sovereign's health failed. Royal expert Duncan Larcombe, in the wake of the couple's stint in the UK, said Meghan was more like a minefield than a ticking time bomb. If it's not one thing, it's another. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle allegedly declined an invitation to see Queen Elizabeth twice before the monarch passed away. Vanity Fair's royal correspondent Katie Nicholl details the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's exit from the British royal family and its lasting impact on all sides. Nicola alleged that the couple was first invited in summer 2019 to spend a long weekend at the Queen's beloved Balmoral estate in Scotland. However, the couple was allegedly distancing themselves months before they officially announced their departure. The Queen traditionally hosted a big gathering for her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. It was always a weekend that she looked forward to, and on this occasion, the Sussexes didn't go. I was told that it wouldn't have fit their narrative at that point. At that point, the narrative was very much, this is us against them. There was that sense of separation, and perhaps turning up and playing happy families wouldn't have fit into the narrative. In her book, Nicola alleged that the Sussexes chose to take the son Archie to Ibiza and the south of France, a decision that raised eyebrows at the time. Reports alleged that the gateway coincided with Markle's birthday on August the 4th. By that point, Markle, a former American actress, was said to be frustrated with the palace's lack of support. Nichol said the couple was exhausted by the press scrutiny, a racism they felt was both overt and covert, and the primal need as parents to protect their baby son. Life in the UK had become unbearable.